The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. Our top story this morning. Police are searching for the driver responsible for a massive chain reaction crash last night in downtown Bakersfield. One woman is in the hospital this morning and she is in critical condition. Several others were hurt. 17's Christian Galeno has more. Just before 6 p.m. Tuesday, drivers in rush hour traffic heading north on Union Avenue had no idea they were seconds away from a crash. Apparently the light may have been red and he was passing several vehicles and then collided obviously into one or several vehicles causing basically a chain reaction. The driver of our suspect vehicle did flee the scene. Bakersfield police say 10 cars in all were involved, including the ones suspected of starting the domino effect. One of those drivers, Christina Mancha, was lucky she got away with just a bump on her head and some rear end damage to her vehicle. The good thing is I'm able to stand and everything is. I didn't know what to do. I panicked. I got out of my car and um, I was going to call 911 but then I seen the car behind me was in flames. We were coming from under the little overpass over there where Truxton is and we just, I just seen flames and I was like, hey, look. And he looked and there was it was just like big old flame. One of the vehicles was fully engulfed. The driver of that vehicle was pulled from the car and life was spared at that time by a Apparently a good Samaritan. Police report a woman and a man were transported to area hospitals. That woman is in critical condition. BPD says they are on the lookout for the driver responsible, believed to be driving a full-size Chevy or GMC Silverado type of truck. Speed does seem to be a factor in the crash, which is still under investigation. In Bakersfield, Christian Galeno, 17 News. Meantime, a bicyclist has died after being struck by a vehicle in southeast Bakersfield. According to the California Highway Patrol, the crash happened just before 6 o'clock yesterday evening on Eucalyptus Drive, just east of Fairfax Road, not far from Pioneer Park. CHP says for unknown reasons, a woman on a bicycle crossed the street in front of a car and was hit. The driver stayed on the scene until police arrived. CHP said the driver was not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Now to the coronavirus in Kern County and a bit of good news as cases decline in our area. Yesterday we learned another 398 people were infected with COVID-19. We also learned of another death. Hospitals continue to improve as well as we head into the holidays. 205 people are in the hospital with more severe symptoms of the virus. 47 more are in the ICU. That is the lowest number of ICUs since late August. Local health officials also speaking yesterday about the decline in the COVID-19 cases, but warning there's still an expected surge following the holiday travel season. The drop in our case rate has had a positive impact on the state's modeling projections. The worst case scenario in the state's modeling continues to suggest a significant surge in early February, peaking with 615 cases on February 16th and 483 hospitalizations on February 23rd. In comparison, Kern Public Health Director Bryn Kerrigan says the best case scenario, according to state modeling, suggests a steady continual decrease in cases and hospitalizations, with hospitalizations bottoming out in March 2022. All adults may soon become eligible for the Pfizer COVID booster vaccine. In news first reported by the New York Times, the FDA could authorize Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 booster shot for all adults as early as tomorrow or Friday which is when the CDC's Vaccine Advisory Committee is scheduled to meet to discuss boosters. Pfizer requested emergency use authorization for the COVID booster last week, stating the results of their Phase 3 clinical trial showed the third dose to be safe and effective. In your 17 Health Watch, Kern Medical and Adventist Health are uniting their hospitals in an effort to bring more health care services to Kern County. The partnership includes a plan for more jobs, better working conditions, and special medical services so patients don't have to leave Kern County for treatment. Though immediate changes may not be noticed for some time, the partnership will allow each hospital to create and utilize each other's teams and specialists. Enhance our ability to attract and retain 
subspecialists. In addition, we believe that this partnership will enhance our ability to train more physicians uh, in the future to populate our community. When a surgeon needs to literally call for the Calvary, other surgical team members can come on in. Adventist Health has already started looking to expand its staff in neurosurgery, gastroenterology, and urology. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and the debate over whether to redraw county districts came to an end yesterday, with county supervisors largely voting on a new map. In a 4-1 to one vote, with Supervisor Leticia Perez opposing the decision, supervisors adopted the map known as Draft Plan A3. That would leave districts largely the same. The other map that was discussed was Draft Plan D, designed by the Equity Maps Coalition. It would have added a third Latino majority district. The fact is that if we didn't move a single line, a single inch, we would meet the requirements of the law. The fact is that what we're looking for is balance. Districts are drawn in such a way that the underserved areas of Kern County are in districts with other areas that are underserved. Redistricting happens every decade following the census. The 2020 census revealed people identifying as Hispanic or Latino have become the majority in Kern County for the first time on record. The Kern County Board of Supervisors have approved a new contract allowing the city of McFarland to continue using the county fire department. The board passed the $6.4 million contract yesterday. It provides McFarland fire protection duties and enforcement of state fire marshal regulations from the Kern County Fire Department. Delano Shafter and Wasco signed similar contracts last month. Looking ahead to tomorrow, and you might hear about a large-scale emergency happening out at Meadowsfield Airport. But don't be alarmed, it's just a drill. The Kern County Airports Department will hold an emergency response exercise, simulating a commercial plane crash with several local emergency crews, including police, fire, and the sheriff's office, participating. Drills like this are designed to help agencies prepare a coordinated and quick response in case something like this actually happens. The FAA requires all commercial airports conduct a full-scale exercise every three years. The nation will be on verdict watch once again this morning as a jury of 12 decides the fate of Kyle Rittenhouse's future. The court reconvened yesterday for the 18 members of the jury to uh, be randomly reduced to 12. Rittenhouse himself chose the 12 jurors out of a tumbler. Seven women and five men, including one person of color. Rittenhouse is charged with killing two men and injuring a third after violence broke out in Kenosha following the police shooting of Jacob Blake last summer. Dramatic closing arguments wrapped up late Monday with the prosecution portraying him as a then 17 year old vigilante and defense insisting there was a rush to judgment. Every person who was shot was attacking Kyle. Kyle shot Joseph Rosenbaum to stop a threat to his person. And I'm glad he shot him. Protesters in Kenosha, meantime, are making sure their voices are heard. They marched along the streets last night, chanting and holding signs, demanding justice for those killed and injured by Rittenhouse. If convicted, Rittenhouse could face life in prison. Here at home, the second man convicted of murdering a father and son during a gas station robbery in 2016 learned he will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Jim Langston was in the courtroom when the judge handed down the sentence yesterday. He and Darnell Hammond were found guilty of two counts of murder in the robbery at Quality Gas Station in Lamont, where they killed owners Eriberto Aceves and his adult son Juan. Although Langston was not the one who fired the deadly shots, the judge said he was still at fault for the murder. You're responsible whether you pulled the trigger or not. Hammond, who prosecutors say killed the father and son, was being considered for the death penalty. Instead, he was sentenced to life without parole earlier this month. Plenty of food in your pantry this holiday season. You might consider helping families that are not as fortunate and must turn to local food banks for this holiday season. After a one-year hiatus, KGET has teamed back up with Community Action Partnership of Kern Food Bank for a holiday food drive. That's where we find 17's Chris Burton live outside of our studios in downtown Bakersfield. Chris, good morning. 
Maddie, Alex, good morning. I know Kevin has been bringing you updates all uh, all morning here, but we are still in the early stages of the, of the food drive here on Compassion Corner. We have been seeing a handful of cars though. They've been coming in, they've been dropping off food. Volunteers here expect the uh, donations to pick up a little bit as we get into the mid morning too. So we should start to see some more cars here roll on through. Now I wanna take you down the uh, list of details here just real quick. Again, this uh, event is going on now. It'll be going on until 7 p.m. tonight. It's happening right here at the intersection of 22nd and M Streets down in downtown Bakersfield. And KG&T and Cap K are asking for non-perishable food donations. So I know I have a couple of cans of chili that have been sitting in my pantry. I'm going to take those over after work. But anything you've got that is non-perishable, they will accept. They're also accepting monetary donations. Um, one volunteer told me that just one dollar will account for nine pounds of food. So you could really do a lot of good just by donating a couple bucks here this morning. And we should also add holiday items to this list. Cap K officials say a large portion of holiday food items that the bank distributes come from donations. This includes things like turkeys, sweet potatoes, stuffing, and more. Now, if you can't make it out here today, you can also donate online. We have a link to donate on our website at kget.com. You can also donate at capk.com on their food bank page. I'll be bringing you more updates throughout the morning, but for now, live at outside KGET studios, Chris Burton, 17 News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.